Hey guys, welcome back to the series of videos on STA. In this video, we will see how to analyze crosstalk delta in timing reports. I'm assuming that you have basic understanding of signal integrity issues like crosstalk and glitch. Otherwise, you can watch my previous video on basics of signal integrity. I'll keep the link in the description. But I'll quickly summarize noise related issues in STA. There are many timing effects of cross couple capacitors. Two such major crosstalk effects are delay and static noise. The delay effect of crosstalk is called crosstalk delta. Static noise always happens when one of the two signals is switching and the other one is stable. In this case, you can see that the aggressor is actually switching and the victim B is actually stable at logic 0. Since the aggressor is switching from 0 to 1, there is a noise bump created on the signal B, which is also called as switching bump. This, if it exceeds certain threshold, can cause functional failures because downstream logic can treat this as a signal 1, so it could invert the signal. So this could create a functional failure. Whereas the crosstalk delta issue happens when both the aggressor and the victim are switching. You can see that the signal A and C are actual aggressors and B is the victim, right? So A is switching from 0 to 1 and B is switching from, sorry, C is switching from 1 to 0, which uh, could have different effects on signal B. If the aggressor and victim are switching in the same direction, it could make the transition faster and it could be bad for the whole timing. And if aggressor and victim are switching in opposite directions, then it could increase the transition time and uh, create problem for the setup time. So this is basically increasing the delay uh, and not actually causing the functional failure. So this is uh, basically called crosstalk delta. It doesn't mean that the crosstalk delta cannot cause functional failures. It can cause functional failures in certain cases where the noise is too much. In that case, actually this signal can go too much down that it can switch between the logic, right? In that particular scenario is called as a double switching. Now let's go over the analysis methods. So there are multiple methods in which we can analyze crosstalk delta. Some of the commands I have mentioned it here. The first way is to analyze crosstalk at the timing path level. That is basically to check the delta delay and delta transition in timing reports. We can do report timing and we can use the switch hyphen crosstalk. In that way, we can see the crosstalk at each timing point. That is one way. And the other way is to check the detailed crosstalk information for any arc, any particular arc within the timing path. So this will give a lot of other information about the aggressors and victims and what is the noise bump that it is creating. The way to check this is also similar, which is using the switch crosstalk for the report delay calculation. Don't focus much on the commands because commands can change tomorrow, but the way we analyze things will be similar. So we can analyze at the timing path level and timing arc level and also we can we will have another command which uh, will report us all the worst case delta delays uh, in the design itself which is report si bottleneck so in report si bottleneck we have multiple cost types which we can give uh, if we give a cost type as delta delay then we will have the worst case uh, nets which have the highest delta delays and finally we have this uh, another command called report si double switching which is basically uh, to detect the double switching in case of delta delays so first we will start with this report si bottleneck which will give us uh, a summary report of which are the nets having the highest uh, delta delay right in this case uh, you can see that it is reporting 11 ps as the highest uh, delta delay caused by a single net right and the bottleneck cost is uh, reported as delta delay so this information is very useful in detecting the nets with worst crosstalk and fix them accordingly next comes the timing report uh, delta and delta trans right the column delta in this report signifies that this much additional delay has been added by the crosstalk 
to the total delay. So for example, you can see here it is 0 0.9 PS and here it is 0 0.8 PS, here it is 1 PS. These values will be added total of this mean plus 3 times sigma, then this value will be added and that's how our incremental value will be created. So this is, gives overall information about which uh, net might be having highest delta and we may have to uh, go and fix those nets if it is uh, too much contribution from the crosstalk. Now in case if there is uh, any net which is having highest amount of delta then we can analyze for that particular arc which are the aggressor uh, causing the problem to this uh, net right in that case we can do report delay calculation minus uh, or hyphen crosstalk for that particular arc itself so that reports us uh, these many information so th this is basically the header part and this is formation part right so before this there will be delay calculation normal delay calculation that will be present this is basically the uh, crosstalk part only which i have shown you now in this case in this header part there are so many information you can see that the victim net is reported here victim net is the net which we have reported the daily calculation for right and it has uh, mentioned that there are 42 aggressors and uh, number of effective aggressors uh, is nine because that's because if an aggressor exceeds some threshold value of um, switching bump then only it will be considered as an effective aggressor so only nine aggressors are effective aggressors in this case then there are many other information such as whether the net is reselected and what is the uh, driver uh, rail voltage uh, of the victim and what whether the double switching is uh, enabled or not you can see that it's not analyzed in this case and it'll also check what is the composite aggressor uh, mode which is statistical here uh, it may not be, uh, but we, we keep it for highest accuracy all right so then other two uh, variables are very important here one is the uh, crosstalk delay analysis mode it can be all paths and or all path edges all paths is pessimistic all path edges is more accurate in case of all paths what happens is two things that always the worst case uh, is possible uh, which is uh, let's say for setup it will always assume both the aggressor and victim are always switching but it may not be the case in reality if we check the timing window there could be a case where uh, when the aggressor is switching the victim can never switch right it, that will be analyzed in case of all path edges and that kind of pessimism will be removed and in case of logical correlation logical correlation if it is turned off in this case it is true if it is false then what happens is uh, again the tool will consider the worst case scenario for example for setup it will always consider that it is possible that the aggressor and victim uh, are switching in the opposite directions which will increase the delay right but in some cases it may not be true that uh, it, there is a possibility that the aggressor and victim can never switch in the same uh, opposite direction it will be in the same direction then it will improve the timing it will improve the transition and it becomes better for setup so that kind of analysis is also done in this case right so this is the header part so it also gives us a lot of other attributes like uh, whether the aggressor is active it's a composite aggressor all these things and this um, attribute will be mentioned over here you can see that uh, it has mentioned here now when the victim is rising and the victim is falling what are the uh, aggressors that it has seen right here also it has shown what are the aggressors and what is the actual coupling cap that it is seeing and what is the library cell what is the clock that is driving this and also it will also mention the uh, attributes right and also it is mentioning what is the switching bump that it has created switching bump is basically noise bump uh, it's it's actually the ratio of VDD which is basically the voltage divided by total voltage VDD so this is basically 2% this is also 2% of the VDD so that's all for now thanks a lot for watching I'll see you in the next video bye bye